Our next guest is an author, business turnaround specialist, and hedge fund manager who's one of the smartest people I've ever met regarding macroeconomics. His weekly blog will undoubtedly make you smarter than everyone else. Today, I ask him whether the new problems in Europe are good or bad for investors here in the U.S. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephen Bick. Steve, how you doing, man? Uh, very well. Thanks for having me. Hey, you know, I feel like we've had this conversation. It's like deja vu. I feel like it we is. had this conversation three, <laughs> four years ago about Europe and Greece right. and all this stuff. Uh, but it's hitting the news again. So is this actually news? Is it the same problems as it was before? What's going on over there, man? No, you're exactly right. It is the same problems as before. They did a pretty good job of kicking the can down the road. And fortunately, during that time, I think that the other problems, which were Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Ireland, they seem to be on better footing today they than they were back then. They're still not fixed by any mean, but certainly Greece was always the outlier of those problems, and that's now come back to haunt them. And, and so here we go. So yeah, here we go. Mm. <laughs> so, so what happens next then? Because you can only kick this can so far. It's a debt Correct. issue, right? It is a debt issue, yeah. And the problem with it is, in most cases, what you would do is you would let your currency depreciate. Okay. And once your currency depreciates, that allows you to export more, you become more competitive globally. But the Greeks just don't have that opportunity. Because they're, because the Euro. they're part of the Euro. Ah. So what they're thinking of doing is if they leave the Euro, that was what they were talking about, the Grexit, right? The mm -hmm. Greek exit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what they were calling it. The, the Grexit. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> So they were talking about leaving the euro, um, but then the problem is if they launch, and they have to launch a new currency, and they originally had the drachma, but now they would have to launch a currency in tandem with the euro, and so the shopkeepers would then have to accept both euros and the new drachma, and they think that once they release themselves from the euro, the drachma would just implode, and no one would lend them any money, and they would literally be bankrupt. So wow. that's really the wake-up call, I think, for the government, who was calling for this referendum to say, you know, let's get rid of Europe. We don't need them. I think when he went to meet with, uh, you know, Chancellor Merkel and all of them, he came back thinking, oh, oh we'd better try and stay part of this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely better for them. I don't know how good it is for everyone else involved with the euro, as we've seen it kind of, you know, the euro was much stronger than the dollar. Correct. Just six, seven months ago. Yeah. It was much stronger. And that's kind of evened up a little bit. Um, we've right. also seen that, uh, you know, things as far as, you know, what's what's going on in the stock market haven't really been the same as they were two, three years ago when we were talking about Greece. We're seeing a lot of down days. We're seeing yeah. a lot of uncertainty. Um, the Dow tends to go no lower than 17, two or 300. Right. And then it bounces right back up to 18,000. So yeah. as an investor, I mean, Steve, just, I mean, give me your opinion because I know you don't have a crystal ball. Okay? No. But is this a good thing? Is this a good thing because it makes the U.S. look better? Um, and, and because it's going to drag down Europe a little bit, which makes the U.S. The sh that's still the number one? Or is this something that investors should be concerned about because there's a trickle-down effect that we're not going to see behind the scenes? No, without a doubt. I think you're seeing a trickle-down effect, but not just in Greece. I think you're also seeing, for example, in China, where their stock market has really taken a beating. I don't know if you followed that. No, I haven't down, that. They're down 50% or so just this year of, from their peak. Wow. They're still up, amazingly. So <laughs> I know just shows you how over you know inflated wow. they were. That's crazy. Well, at the peak, their price to earnings ratio was averaging 64, and you think of the Standard and Poor's, and they were the average for the S and P's around 20 right now, whereas a normal market for the S and P would be around 15. So you take China at 64, a normal market for the U.S. is 15. Right. They're way overpriced, so they were due for correction, but to roll in with Greece and China and these types of macroeconomic risks, I think it really starts putting a little bit of a lid, certainly on the US stock market because of the fear issue. But what I think it's also putting a lid on is the Federal Reserve being able to raise interest rates in the near term. Let's talk about that because they've said that they're going to very soon I know. start to raise interest rates. Um, first of all, do you believe that the macroeconomic situation warrants that? Number two, do you think that uh, it, it's even a smart move to consider, even if it did? Personally, I think that what they're doing is they're jawboning, right? It's, it's actually a financial <laughs> term they use back in is Greenspan. Is that a South day. African term? No. Back in Greenspan's <laughs> day, they would talk about him jawboning his position, right? Which means he's talking it up. And what they would do is they, they look in now to say, hey, this interest rate's coming, this interest rate's coming and they're talking it up and it's putting a lid on the market because I think they thought it was getting too frothy. 
But going back to what you were saying, I, in the overall economic environment, I just don't see how they can. Because if they raise interest rates, the dollar's going to get even stronger. And that's already putting a lid on earnings. I mean, you've seen things, people like Microsoft and Intel and all these companies that are earning outside of the US when they translate those earnings back into the US dollars. As the US dollar keeps getting stronger, it's starting to put a lid on their income and their, their bottom line. And so <clears throat> what you're telling me there is that basically the trickle down possibilities are based mostly around the global companies. Yep. Because the global companies are, they enjoy the currency situation um, or the devaluing of currencies in other places because it helps make their earnings look better and ultimately makes the stock prices go higher. So you might look at Microsoft and say, oh yeah, American company. But that's a global right. uh, financial company is what it really is. So yeah. when we see things like this happening in Europe, um, that could eventually affect them. Well, it is already. <coughs> Their earnings are already being affected because when they translate the earnings from Europe and from other parts of the world outside of America, and they translate it back into dollars, because the dollars got so strong, it's having an impact negatively on their earnings. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's, crazy. that's a problem. This is great stuff. Love talking to you, Steve. Um, I have one big question for you right here because you wrote uh, an article in your blog, mm -hmm. um, which we'll put up the link to your blog since it's, it's so long yes. for me to say. I can't remember it, so it's up. You can look on the screen right, right. now. Exactly. Go, to that, go to that website. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but you wrote uh, about a concave versus convex investment situation, yes. and you seem to be a little bit bearish in that article. And that was a couple of weeks ago. So I want to know where you stand right now on just you know the indexes. Let's call it the S&P, let's call it the Dow. Uh, for investors, do you feel bullish, bearish, or would you just be out of the I market? I personally right here? think um, that, well, I personally am out of the market. That's You're out. Me. You're flat. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But um, that's just me. I think the, the market does have some upside to it. I can't say how much, but I just feel that there's far more downside to the market than there is upside. <laughs> And if you look at the concave versus convex type investment situation, what the idea behind that is, and that wasn't even my idea, that came from a fantastic book called Anti-Fragile, written by Nassim Talib. And what he's proposed, and the reason he used anti-fragile, by the way, is because if you think of a glass and you throw it on the ground and it shatters, okay, that's fragile. If you throw that glass on the ground, the opposite to that would be not only does it get stronger, but bigger and better, mm. right? Mm. So there is no word. Robust doesn't capture that word. Robust would mean it just doesn't break. It yeah. doesn't get better. So he created this word anti-fragile. And that's the concave versus convex portfolio, where what you want to do is you want to make certain that your portfolio gets better and stronger during down times and when things go bad, because that's really when you can really capture a lot of the upside to your whole portfolio, right? You d if you don't take a loss, it's Warren Buffett's theory, just yeah. don't lose money. That's right. Well, Nassim's taking it one step further. He's saying not only don't lose money, but have a better portfolio when things get bad. As a result And of that's it. the convex. So the worse things get, the better your portfolio gets. And that's really what I'm trying to look at for my portfolio, is to make certain that where I'm investing, has upside if and when things get bad. They don't, it doesn't do badly during good times, but it does even better during bad times. Wow, just great stuff. If you don't feel smarter, I don't know what to tell you. Stephen Beck, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, really thanks for having it. me. Stick around for more commercial free content right here on Smarter San Diego, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else.